classic hand tools was born out of an interest in the sale of antique, collectible and used second hand tools. Whilst people were saying all the old tools were the best and people don't make things of this quality anymore, I thought, well, that's actually not true because there are some pretty good people out there, small independent makers, making stuff as good as what they did in the olden days, if not in some cases better. This is a saw from a guy called Eddie Siritich of Adria Saw Works up in Vancouver. He only actually makes five saws. He makes this little dovetail saw, and he makes a rip and a crosscut tenon saw and two large tenon saws. This is a traditional Western style handle, you know, probably a copy of an 18th century handle design, but hasn't really been bettered in terms of aesthetics. It does fit like a glove and it's, it's nice, to, nice to hold. I thought for a long time there's an interest in people making stuff again by hand. There's a lost couple of generations who never did any, any woodworking or metalworking at school and therefore they never actually had any even basic training. But I think there are a lot of people who want to be able to make things. This beautiful little plane is made in America. A little half inch shoulder plane made by a company called Lee Nielsen, which everyone knows the name. They've been going 35 years. Tom Lee Nielsen started pretty much on his own that many years ago, and they've sort of built to their present strength. They don't compromise on quality, so it's nice to have that in our product range. I don't actually like noise and, and machines. Up there, there's umpteen different brands of bandsaw and umpteen different reviews on each and every one of them. And uh, I've got really no interest in them personally so therefore you know you can't have a passion for your business if you're not really that interested in what you're selling whereas this stuff intrigues me how it's made where it's made the people who make it it's the whole picture really this is a french company called oreo who make uh, amongst other things stone carving tools this is all made by hand made by blacksmiths down at the forge, the whole of the tool is forged because this body is a barrel shape. It's far more comfortable to use. So if you're using it for any long period of time, it's, it's a much nicer tool to use. Because you've got to forge this bit as well, this will be typically 30% more expensive than, than that one. Customers, they ask for it. They're telling the factory Make, make it like this for us, please, because that's what we want. So they're responding to what the customer wants, not just for a price point. Apart from myself, I have three full-time staff. All of those are woodworkers, or at least I've put them on woodworking courses. You need that if people phone up. When people start talking about a particular thing, it's not a number, it's, well, oh yeah, I know where that is. There's a bit of a conversation goes on. We have a woodland craft section. This is made in Sweden, up in a place called Gransfors Brooks. Gransfors will have quite a range, 20 or 30 different axes for all sorts of different applications for you know heavy duty log splitting down to little hatchet or axe like this. There's only four blacksmiths there, and I visited the factory. It's really quite exciting to see them make these things. The skill level of the people who are forging and, and shaping these things is phenomenal. Really. Vettelings, similar, similar company from Sweden doing similar sort of work, and we represent both of those now. I started with mail order. I didn't have the money at the time to have a, a shop premises. And since we've developed, we're now in our shop premises. And people who come and visit tend to be quite serious about what they want and are quite specific. This is a hand stitch rasp. On here, there's hundreds or if not thousands of little raised teeth. It's all done by hand and you've got slightly irregular pattern in there because it's done by hand which means when you're shaping your wood you don't get this ploughed field effect. And I've seen these guys put these teeth on here all day long sitting at their sort of north facing window so the light is consistent and uh, doing that five, six days a week to um, you know, create a tool which still works better than any other tool in the world but you know, machine-made cheaper ones. 
I mean, it's been quite difficult the last few years, obviously, but same for any small business. But my belief is I want to keep um, supporting niche and quality makers. I don't know of anyone else that's got, just got hand tools, uh, or at least the range that we have.